You ready? No. But uh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> as long as I can't film anything. No, you can't. Okay. Oh, no, that's gross. No, no, it's really cool. Now, sometimes you can pop it like an egg, which we try to avoid here. Right. Because it's under pressure a little bit, so... What we're doing here is just, it's only really attached on the top. So, that's what I want. So the, the cyst and the skin are attached. Really? Really, yeah. Does that make it more difficult? No, 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 they all are. Okay. Um, nothing is really floating around in the body. Okay. It, it would be too irregular. Like fat is held down. It's not. It's not just sitting there. It's right. held okay. down by some tissue. Um, all things are held down by some tissue. Okay. Um, fascia, for the most part, is the generic name for that tissue. And so, you'll see a little bit of bleeding, but. But for the most part, there's a tissue on top of the scalp called a gallia. Mm -hmm. The gallia is really, really slick. And as a result of being really slick, almost nothing like the cyst is holding on to the gallia. Okay. So typically, if I can grab the cyst like now, go ahead and move that hand. There you go. Then if I can just get the top of the cyst released. This thing typically will almost come out really easily. And it's really close. It's almost like giving birth if you watch it. It's kind of, well, there's no way to describe it other than, than that. That's kind of. And I've got it on camera. Have you seen it on camera too? So. Oh, that's fine. No, but you watch, you watch, and it'll describe it almost exactly if this goes away. I want it to without rupturing this. I think people are gonna, not, well, not make fun of me, but tease me, saying, "Hey, you're giving birth to a cyst. You doctor even said so." Oh, that's true. Let's see. He's crowning. I actually watched when my wife was giving birth. It was kind of. Kind of weird at first, but then like it's kind of fascinating. As it's well. one of the most grossest but most glorious events yes. you could ever watch. Like it starts off horrible, yeah, and then it ends up to be the one of the most beautiful things. Yeah. So I'm rupturing it a little bit. Uh, That's all right. There you go. That is, ugh. See, that's a good that camera moment right there. Kinds of nasty right there. So. Uh, a little rupture, there's a little cyst right there. No way. Yeah. It's disgusting. But now what you're left with yeah, is just a little hole. Probably bleeding just barely. They very rarely bleed much at all. Yeah. See how there's almost no blood? Wow. And so then it's just a matter of I make sure that it ain't got a little bit of bleeding right there. And what I do now is we use a cautery type pin. It's actually called a desiccator. That's just a little connected tissue right there. Okay. Typically we'll clean it up to make sure. If there's any cyst wall remaining, it can sometimes reform the cyst. So you like to see them come out pretty attached. Right. But you see that little cyst fragment right there? Yeah. We don't want that to be in there. Right. Because it could reform. And this is that membrane that was probably holding it. Okay. That's gross. Well. Oh, looks like a worm. No, it's actually, it was like, um, so when you take chicken. Yeah. You take chicken and you take the skin off. Right. If you look closely at the chicken breast, you don't really see the, the meat yet, right? Mm -hmm. There's actually a thin, shimmery right. layer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. That's fascia. Oh, uh, okay. That's kind of what we just pulled off here. Okay. We just do a little visual inspection of the little hole. 
make sure that's fine. I'll dry it off so you can tuck stuff in there if you want. Well, oh, that's gross. That's like having an extra pocket. So are you are like all the way down into the skull right there? Yeah. Oh. And all I'm doing is just looking around to make sure that I have everything. So then it's just a matter of closure. Now with the the skin, how it, uh, it you know it kind of stretched when the cyst was there. I mean, is that is that good stretching going to go go away or? It will for this size, but you do bring up a good point. Like for instance, someone who puts on thirty pounds of weight mm -hmm. and then loses that weight looks pretty dang normal. Yeah. Someone who puts on hundred and eighty pounds worth of weight and then loses that weight looks like they have some really stretched skin. Right? Yes, right. In this particular case, had your cyst been significantly larger? then yes, I would have, I would cut a little bit of excess skin away. Okay. Uh, but in this particular case, this, this amount of skin, so what would happen is if you had too much skin is this excess stuff that's right here, mm -hmm. I would trim some of that away. Okay. But this cyst was small enough that you don't need to. Okay, that's um, good. It'll lay completely flat. This, good. All skin, when it's done healing, will, will retract. Okay, that's good. So there won't be like any like indentations or anything like that left over. Oh no. Okay. Well at first when you first feel it, there's a, gonna be a void there. Right. That void will feel like an indentation. Okay. But eventually your subcutaneous fat mm -hmm. will fill it back up. So your fat underneath the skin mm -hmm. will fill it up its place and it will feel just like normal. Just like normal. Okay. Should, but if you feel it at first, it'll feel a lot similar to a soft spot on a baby skull. Right, okay. Now, is this the dissolving? Yep. You don't need many, but it's just, it's going to be a little stronger for you by doing it this way. Right. Because being younger and being willing to do some athletics, you just don't want to have it easy to spread. How many how many stitches of the normal uh, probably, probably about four, maybe okay. three. It'll look a little puckered at first. Mm -hmm. I want it to, because the skin will retract. Mm -hmm. So I don't want it to look like it's perfectly flat. Okay. Um, and you'll see what I mean by the time I get a couple stitches in. You know, when you look at the seams of a baseball, mm -hmm. how it's kind of puckered right. from the leather being wrapped up, mm -hmm. that's kind of what I want this to look like too. Okay. Shows my wife, she'll be fascinated by it. She's kind of morbid like that. Oh no, actually, it's it is really cool. Yeah, this is what actually got me into this field. Oh, really? I was uh, about to join the Marine Corps. Oh, nice. And I had an ingrown toenail, mm -hmm. and I didn't pass the physical as a result. They said you have to get that fixed prior to us taking you because mm -hmm. we don't want to fix it first. Yeah, and so which is fair enough. So I had to go get it fixed, so I went to the dermatologist, and they started to remove my fingernail. Well, I wanted to watch, which they were worried about me watching. They said, you know, you can get woozy, pass out, so I said, just let me watch. But after watching it, I was like, this is really cool. Mm -hmm. Well, even in the Marine Corps, there's obviously no medicine. I didn't yeah. do any of that. I just did my own thing. But when it, it did influence me to say that this is what I wanted to do when it was all said and done. Right. Well, that's cool. Mm -hmm. And this is the last one. Nice. It looks all fancy when you watch the suture, but basically what we're tying is a square knot. Oh, okay. I go clockwise one re revolution, and then mm -hmm. I go counterclockwise one revolution, and then that's pretty much it. Like, uh, it for you and you can see the final result. Oh. Wow. Oh, that, that didn't 
so as you can see, all gone. Oh, yeah. Now the little white that you see in this zone, mm -hmm. that's the lidocaine with epinephrine. Okay. Epinephrine helps it not bleed, and you're all done. Nice.